We are going to start. It's just a moment of silence. Everyone, if you'd like to join in, just 10 seconds silence. Okay. Oh, maybe I'll even cry. I might cry on this podcast. Fuck me. All right. Well, let's get through this. Round 15 recap. Welcome to the tripod. My name's Alex. Um, be breaking down round 15. That's just come and gone. A lot of you that are in the group have just witnessed some absolutely diabolical bullshit. Maybe your mum's died. Maybe your grandma's died in the recent years. This is worse. This is far worse. Um, what I normally do is I normally break down the game that we just saw, but I'd like to start from the Thursday game just so I can paint uh, a wonderful picture of what's just transpired in front of us. Um, before I start, um, like if you look at this shit in a um, in a nutshell, in a vacuum, wasn't a bad week. Eighteen and eight on best bets, cash two out of three multis, slight profit on uh, on the multis. Um, but I'll go game by game, and um, I guess you guys that weren't around, you'll figure out uh, what happened during the week. Hang on, I need to get the graphics right here. Let's start on Thursday. <clears throat> had the Tigers beating the Rabbits fourteen to nine. We had four best bets. On the game, we went three and one on the game. I, I mentioned that I, I do like, um, you know, taking teams that are, you know, on the cusp of the eight, um, you know, off the bye week that have just gotten a close win, and that was the Tigers um, getting that close win over the Cowboys the week before um, or two weeks before. So I thought that they would be amped up, especially at home. And the Rabbits just haven't been playing the same, that's for sure. It was a fucking messy game. If you guys watched that one on Thursday night, you would have noticed it was one of the worst games that you've ever watched. Um, in the NRL, 25 errors between the two teams um, and, a, and an awesome late try by Michael Cheekham uh, to seal victory for the Tigers. Massive win for them. Um, that catapults them back into the eight um, and they're looking pretty good now while the Rabbits are on a pretty bad skid. Note, um, and I'll, I'll note after every game what we had in our multis. Um, note that we had Tigers, Rabbits, uh, oh sorry, no. I don't think we actually had uh, a bet of this game in the multi. But this next game, we certainly did. Um, it was Friday early game. We had the Dragons beating the Cowboys 22-14. to 14. Went 1-1 one one on plays. I thought that we were on the right side, to be honest with you. Um, another very, very messy game. Fucking 20 errors between the two teams. These were two of the worst games, maybe, um, quality-wise, that I'd seen in the entire season. I, I was wondering, you know, what was going on. But it kind of makes sense coming off the bye week. A lot of teams um, come back a little bit rusty. And that's what they fucking did. But, you know, 20 errors between both the teams, less than 80% completion rate between both these teams as well. Um, and the difference was fucking conversions and conversions have fucked us this whole entire fucking week. I'll tell you that. Cowboys 0 out of three conversions and we lose the cover by one and a half points. If he just makes one of those three conversions, we fucking catch Cowboys plus six and a half. If uh, Corey Norman doesn't fucking curl the motherfucker in from the sideline, which he never does, then we also win that bet. Under 40 and a half, obviously, cash is easy. Um, and under 40 and a half was one of the first legs in our Unibet multi, in our Bet365 multi. We had a bunch of multis on this week, um, as you'll find out. But we had a Bet365 multi that was paying $31, over $31. We had a Unibet multi that was paying uh, $17. And we had a Bet Easy multi that was paying $6. Um, and as you'll notice as we get to the end, it all came down to the final game of the round. Um, next up, we had the Storm beating the Roosters 14 to 12. Uh, I really like the Storm in that one. It was, uh, I said, one of my two favorite bets of the round. My favorite bets were Storm and the Panthers, who obviously both won. We go four and one and one on best bets in that one. And it was, you know, pretty much exactly what you would have expected for a game like this. Two of the best teams in the comp, arguably the best teams in the comp. And generally, when you get two very good teams that play each other, um, generally what you get is a high quality game, a lot of completions, a low scoring game, solid defense, and that's exactly what we got. These two teams are the two best defensive teams in the comp, and despite the score being 12 all at half time, um, you know, this still sails well under the total, um, just a low scoring grind. Um, but to be honest, first half, even though there were 24 points scored, once again, both teams looked a little bit clunky, especially the Roosters in attack. Um, a lot of drop balls, a lot of bad fifth tackle options. Um, but, you know, once again, maybe that's what happens off, off the bye week, and maybe that's something that we need to consider a little bit more moving forward, um, that these teams are coming into the bye week looking a little bit clunky. I think that that, you know, was a theme throughout throughout the week. Um, 
And just in the end, I think uh, Storm defense just was too good. Um, and Roosters, like I said, you know, early on, both teams were a little bit clunky. Storm picked it up, and their completion rate in the second half was very, very good, whereas the Roosters were still very clunky, 65% completion rate for the game, and that does not get it done against a team like the Storm. Um, we had Storm, once again, second leg in pretty much every single one of our multis, so we're 2-0 we're on all our multis at this point. Um, next up, we had Manly beating the Titans 30-12. to I didn't fucking have a bet on this one. I mentioned on the, on the preview pod... Um, that I liked Manly in this spot. The line was four, four and a half at the time. I, I could have still probably got a flat four. I really wanted a minus three and a half on Manly. Couldn't find it. Looked around for like, you know, hours on end trying to find one, trying to make one. Couldn't get it. Of course, the line closes six and they absolutely trounce them. It's always the way. Um, whenever you leave a bet um, that you were going to take, it always seems to win. Whenever you're borderline on a bet and you end up taking it, it always seems to lose. Um, and to be honest, that 30 to 12 scoreline probably flatters the Titans. Um, you know, obviously they scored those two late tries. They were not in it. And I think the Titans, um, it's time to put a line through them. They are done for the season. I think, you know, you, you just watching that game coming off the bye, and it's, it's easy to kind of tell the teams that, that think they're still in the hunt and still actually want to play hard, especially off the bye week. Um, and the Titans just did not look like they were in it. It's a disappointing performance at home. And, um, from high hopes at the start of the season for this Titans team, um, they, I, I can, I can safely say that I've crossed the line through them. They're done for the season. All right. Actually, backtrack. Let me just put that graphic back up there. I did have Manly pretty much in every single one of our multis as well. They were in the Bet Three Six Five multi, I believe. They were uh, also in our Bet Easy Four Leg Head to Head multi. So um, we cashed that one, and we're rolling through uh, the weekend. I'm um, having a great weekend. It gets to the nights. Uh, beating the Broncos 26 to 12, we go 4 and 0 on that game. Great game, 4 and 0. Um, and once again, you know, had Knights race to 20 in our multis. Uh, had Knights to win uh, in in a bunch of our multis as well. Um, and they were just too good. Um, the Broncos dead set. Uh, the experiment with Boyd uh, in the halves. Uh, I would say that's a failed experiment. But it seems like they're going to persist with him there. Um, you know, everything that uh, Seabold is saying is that. Um, Boyd's going to stay there for next week and Milford is a better fullback and I completely agree Milford is a better fullback but Darius Boyd is not a top level NRL player he's done um, he needs to get out of that team uh, if, if he was not called Darius Boyd he would not be on a first grade roster let me tell you that he's a turnstile in defense and he's not great in attack either um, he's well past it I've been saying this actually for two years that Darius Boyd has passed it now he is well and truly past it he needs to get out of that team and they're not going to drop him um, so he should fucking do do the Broncos a favor. You've been very loyal to them. They've been very, very loyal to you as a player. Do them a favor and say, look, I'm hanging up the boots, fellas. Um, I'm not going to be back next year, and I'm done. And you'll be doing yourself a favor. You're not going to embarrass yourself anymore, and you'll be doing the Broncos a favor. Um, but the Knights keep rolling. Six out of their last seven. Very, very solid. Missing Ponga at the start just before kickoff was uh, worrying. Um, but Mason Leno is great. Uh, it's great that you can just slot him in there. He takes conversions probably better than Ponga. Um, and just Knights just, just keep on rolling through. And they're, they're bringing some confidence here for sure. And obviously, Knights were in all of our multis as well. So we're rolling here. You know, we've got, we got some fucking solid multis here. Going four out of four legs on the multi, um, on a bunch of multis. Um, so we're rolling through to the weekend. And then late Saturday, uh, we have the Eels beating the Raiders 22 to 16. Um, we had three best bets on the game. Um, we go two out of three. And unfortunately, this one is one that we should have swept. Raiders up 16-0. Um, they let in two fucking bullshit tries just before half time. Um, I think with three minutes to go and basically with no time to go in the first half. Um, and that just gave the Eels some, some momentum heading into half time. Um, and I said this. I fucking said this. And, and and it was just too good to pass up the Raiders straight up price. It was $1.82. It was no higher than like $1.75 anywhere else. Um, but I said this in the, uh, in the preview pod. I said that Raiders are the better team, sure. Um, but playing up in, in muggy conditions up there, it was going to be like, you know, 26 to 28 degrees and muggy. I said that the Raiders might struggle uh, with the heat. And, and I don't know if that's, I don't know if you can pinpoint it, you know, directly to that, I guess, but but I think it can, it certainly played a part. I mean, you know, you're up 16-0 after 35 minutes, then you don't score another try or another point 
and you let in 22 points straight. Um, I do think that the uh, the conditions up there favoured the Eels, and it showed uh, later on in the game. And that's that's one of the reasons why I only took the Raiders to win the first half and not to win the second half. And it worked out all right for us. And it also worked out all right that we didn't have the Raiders in any of our multis. So uh, we're rolling through to Sunday, and uh, all our multis are still alive. We have a $31 Bet365 multi, still alive. Just needs Panthers to win, just needs Sharks to win. We have a Unibet multi, still alive, paying $17. Just needs Panthers to win, just needs Sharks to win. We have a $6 Bet Easy multi, $6.15, I think. Uh, just needs Sharks to win. Doesn't even need Panthers to win. All right, let's see what happens. We roll through to the Panthers game earlier today, and the Panthers eke out a win 19-18 to in what was one of the most fucking ridiculous games that I've seen this season. Um, okay. So, yeah, the the, 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 war, the the Panthers get the win in the end, and it is a great win for them. They keep the ball rolling. That's five in a row for them now. Um, they're building some momentum, and um, Jacob actually texted me before and said, Panthers might be a smoky here uh, to put a futures bet on, because they have the bye next week, and then they have three games at home in a row. So if you're looking to bet on the Panthers, uh, now might not be a terrible time, especially... Um, some of the bookies do not update their futures odds until after the round. So um, the, the Panthers eke out a win, and I think you can still get them at like $34 uh, to win the premiership. They're now sitting in 10th spot on the ladder, only two points out of the eight. But let me let me backtrack here. The Panthers should not have been this close. The, oh, sorry, the Warriors should not have been this close. Firstly, it's six all in the first half. We have Panthers over six and a half in the first half. Okay, fine, that's probably not going to win. But we have Warriors under 10.5 in the first half. Um, it's 6-all. And you get one of the most fucking... Actually, not the most diabolical sin bin... Oh, sorry, 10 minutes that I've seen this season. Because there was a worse one later on. But the, the, what, the Panthers give away a penalty. And the ref comes over and says, All right, that's 10 minutes. Immediately. Immediately. And uh, for it's for, you know, recurring penalties or whatever the fuck. When, you know when they brought in that rule where they say you give away three on your line in a row and you get 10 minutes. Fair enough. This was not three in a row on the line. There had been six sets or maybe even more um, since they got their warning. Um, so you're fucking playing on and it's like, then, then you give away a random penalty and you fucking get 10 minutes. That is absolute garbage. But that's not the worst of it. So the Panthers are down to 12 men. Um, what, you're hoping that the Warriors take the two there, obviously, so they stay at 10.5 points. No, they don't. They go for the try, obviously. They score just before halftime. Um, okay. Come back out in the second half. Warriors make a break. Two of us, a check. Knocks on. Pretends to kick it, but it hits the ground first. So, firstly, that's a knock on. And then Jerome Luai is running through. And he clips the back of RTS's heel. Not on purpose. You see the replay. And anyone that wants to argue... I don't think you can argue that it was on purpose. It certainly wasn't. He was just running through. Clips his heel. Um, in NFL, they call it inadvertent contact. Um, RTS goes down. Another 10 in the bin. So that the fucking Panthers are down to 11 men at this stage through two wrong sin bin calls. Um, and the Warriors go up, you know, 10 points. or Sorry, 12 points, I think they're up at that point. Um, and, you know, it's, it's almost impossible. I'm very, very surprised that the Panthers won this game because when you get two of the worst calls that I've ever seen in my entire life, coupled with the third worst call I've ever seen in my entire life in one game, which is a Warriors try that is reviewed by the video ref and given a try when they can see clearly, clearly, after they give the try, they show a different camera angle. His hand is out of the field of play before he puts the ball down. It boggles my mind that the, the bunker, they've spent millions of dollars on this bunker and they cannot even fucking get a call right when everyone at home can see the fucking camera angles and get it right. It amazes me. Um, you don't see this in any other sport. In the NFL, in the NBA, if there's a call to be made and the video has a look at it, they get it right 10 times out of 10. Um, anyway, so despite all that, despite the three worst calls that I have seen this season in my life, the Panthers get the win. Okay. The Panthers get the fucking win. All our multis are still alive. All we need is the Sharks to win to cash a $31 multi, a $17 multi, and a $6 multi. And they fucking lose. They fucking lose. 14 points to 12. The Bulldogs beat the Sharks. 
in what is the most surprising result to me. I only had one best bet on the game because I didn't love the Sharks because the line was massive. It was getting up towards double digits. Um, the Sharks have to win this game. You, you call yourself a top four team. You've been injured the entire first half of the season. You're not exactly in great position on the ladder. Now you're healthy. You have to fucking beat the Bulldogs. But they just come out flat. They come out flat, fucking concede two of the shittest tries I've ever seen early on. Then they kind of get their head in gear, um, you know, and they get within two. And they're within two for, with 25 minutes left. And you're thinking, all right, they're just going to fucking steamroll them here. Um, but then the dogs just, they're one of those teams where they're so shit but sometimes they, they kind of bring you down to their level, and that's what they did with the Sharks. The Sharks went down to the Bulldogs' level. They got into the grind. I think that they thought that they had, you know, they'd just be able to, to score one more try and win, which was true. Um, but, you know, as the minutes are ticking down, 25 minutes, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, once you get to 10 minutes, you know, anything can happen at that point. It's not, not a given. You're only going to get four or five more sets, um, and the Sharks just weren't good enough to get it done on the day. Um, not only that, the most brutal part of it all. So as I said, we have three big multis, um, you know, riding on this. And I think if you'd put, just for perspective's sake, if you'd put a hundred bucks on all of those multis, I think you'd be looking at about five and a half thousand dollars in profit. Um, not only that, so the Sharks are down 14, 12, the Bulldogs have the ball. It's pretty much over. There's about 50 seconds left. Dogs have the ball. You think they'll just kick it out of touch. No, they kick a grubber. The Sharks pick it up. Jack Williams goes 90 meters. You think he's going to make it. He's going all the way. He's at the, he's at the 30. He's at the 20. He's at the 10. We're going to cash all our multis. No. He gets fucking pulled down on the 8 meter line. But wait, there's still 30 seconds left. Sharks still have a few plays up their sleeves here. Um, they go left. Second tackle. There's a 3 on 1 overlap. And Chad Townsend, who I've said for years is worse than people think he's overrated people people were trying to make a case for him to play origin and i think that's absolutely crazy chad townsend with 30 seconds left on second tackle with a three on one overlap to catch every single one of our multis kicks a grubber kicks a fucking grubber with a three on one overlap on the left hand side the bulldogs hit it out of touch game over well it wasn't even game over they still at two i think uh kick the uh kick the drop out there Unbelievable. Just one of the most ridiculous fucking rounds that I've ever had as a puncher, I think. Um, and it's just disappointing um, when you fucking have, when you're on the wrong side, when you're on the right side of so many games and, um, and that kind of stuff happens. It does hurt. It is punting. And, but I, I still do feel like, and I know that most punters say this, I feel like we've had a lot more bad luck this year than we have had good luck, that's for sure. Um, and this is just another one of those it's fucking brutal to to get like a really lucky win on um, on the Panthers. To be fair, um, to come back from you know thirteen men against eleven um, and, and winning Golden Point, and then to just need a dollar thirty favorite to uh, to get the job done in the last leg is just a fucking diabolical way to end the round. But um, I'd like to say it's good news and that you know you still profited like a thousand dollars if you were betting a hundred dollars on all of our singles. But certainly doesn't feel like we won this round. That's for sure. That will do it for me. I'm done with this shit. Ah, oh, I'll be back on Wednesday. Uh, we'll be breaking down round 16. And then um, oh, I guess I'll decide when I'll be doing a Origin pod. Maybe I'll do one like Monday night or something like that to break down Origin 3. Should be interesting now with Ponga. Seems to be ruled out, so I don't know what they're going to do there. Uh, Queensland's got some, uh, some questions to ask. And then obviously, Cleary looks like he probably won't be able to play Origin 3 either so um yeah it will be an interesting one we've won money on uh, both origins this year so i think that's going six in a row six origins in a row we've been on the right side so um hopefully we'll continue that uh decent round anyway thanks roran it was a it was a good round overall but just uh frustrating to uh to lose three multis in uh, in brutal circumstances like that but um i'll leave you guys to enjoy your sunday night and i'll catch you at 6 p.m on wednesday to break down round 16 see you then